Hello everyone, welcome to another video for Religion 101. I am Jacob Bremen. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Talmud. We're going to be looking at Gitan 56b and Gitan 57a. Now, if we take a look at this right here, Gitan 56b says, the Gemara relates, on Kilos Bar Kalonikas. The son of Titus' sister wanted to convert to Judaism. He went and raised Titus from the grave through necromancy and said to him, Who is most important in that world where you are now? Titus said to him, The Jewish people. Ankylos asked him, Should I then attach myself to them here in this world? Titus said to him, Their commandments are numerous, and you will not be able to fulfill them. It is best that you do as follows. Go out and battle against them in that world, and you will become the chief, as it is written. Her adversaries have become the chief, which means anyone who distresses Israel will become the chief. Ankylos says to them, What is the punishment of that man? A euphemism for Titus himself in the next world? Titus said to him, that which he decreed against himself as he undergoes the following. Every day his ashes are gathered, and they judge him, and they burn him, and they scattered him over the seven seas. Alkilos then ra when raised Balaam from the grave through necromancy. He said, to, he said to him, Who is most important in that world where you are now? Balaam said to him, The Jewish people. Alkilos asked him, Should I then attach myself to them here in this world? Balaam said to him, You shall not seek their peace or their welfare all the days. Ankylos said to him, What is the punishment of that man? A euphemism for Balaam himself in the next world? Balaam said to him, He is cooked in boiling semen, as he caused Israel to engage in licentious behavior with the daughters of Moab. Ankylos then went and raised Jesus the Nazarene from the grave through necromancy, Ankylos said to him, Who is most important in that world where you are now? Jesus said to him, The Jewish people. Ankylos asked him, Should I then attach myself to them in this world? Jesus said to him, Their welfare you shall seek, their misfortune you shall not seek. For anyone who touches them as regard did as if he were touching the apple of his eye. Okay, so um, when I read that verse, well, I mean, those verses in the Talmud, Gitan 56b and 57a, it reminded me very much of what Joseph Atwill was talking about in uh, Caesar's Messiah, in which he was comparing the uh, military campaign of Titus during the Jewish revolt against Rome in, in the late 8060s to 8070, uh, during Titus's military campaign, in those years, with the um, ministry of Jesus, and he noticed numerous parallels between the two. But what the Talmud here, the Talmud is basically, in its own way, comparing Jesus to Commander Titus. Now, the what's interesting is is that Josephus does talk about in Life four hundred twenty to four hundred twenty one that. Um, he took three men down from the cross. Two of them died while the third recovered. And it does parallel the crucifixion scene in the New Testament, as even Joseph Atwell himself also noticed. There are strong parallels with the crucifixion scene in the New Testament, where Jesus is crucified along with two thieves. The two thieves stay dead while Jesus ends up being resurrected. There's a lot of strong parallels with what uh, Joseph says about taking down the three men from the cross. Two of them die and one ends up surviving. Now, um, Titus, the most significant thing about him is that Titus in the Talmud is being resurrected by Ankylos. So that Ankylos could talk to him. That's quite interesting because... All, we have a, all of a sudden there's a resurrecting Titus and even Balaam and Jesus are mentioned back to back with Titus all of which are themselves resurrecting in the same story 
This is quite interesting because um, it goes even further by saying Onkelos is related to Titus. And Josephus does say in his uh, Bellum Judica, or the Jewish Wars, that um, Emperor Vespasian, or the future Emperor Vespasian, was actually the son of David. <clears throat> And I'm sure that is uh that that go uh, I'm sure that is not a coincidence, especially with uh what the Talmud is saying about Titus. He um he he talks about this um in Jewish Wars uh six uh book six uh verses three hundred and eleven to three hundred and thirteen. For the Jews by demolishing the tower of Antonia had made their temple four square while at the same time they had it written in their sacred oracles that then should their city be taken as well as their holy house when once their temple should become four square but now what did most elevate them in undertaking the, this war was an ambiguous oracle that was also found in their sacred writings how about that time one from their country should become governor of the habitable earth the Jews took this prediction to belong to themselves in particular, and many of the wise men were thereby deceived in their determination. Now this oracle certainly denoted the government of Vespasian, who was appointed emperor in Judea. Now, um, in, in conclusion to this, I do not interpret this in the same way that Joseph Atwill does, I do not identify the Son of Man with um, Titus Ivor. Um, and why I have a different uh, conclusion about this, I'll go into further detail in a later video about the Son of Man uh, aspect of it. But as for the rest, the parallels can only be found in the Gospels, the Gospels which were written long after Paul's uh, authentic letters, seven authentic letters. And as such, the historical aspects of Jesus does not show up until, and really, I, 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 as I said before, I date the four Gospels, all four of them, uh, to the mid-AD mid 90s, because they are demonstrably based on the um, works of, of Josephus. And uh, it really is hard to deny that because there's no evidence of the Gospels before the 90s. There's significant uh, parallels to Josephus. All four of them have significant parallels to Josephus' works. They're all basing large aspects of their um, stories from uh, not just the Jewish wars, but also from antiquities and the autobiography. Um, there's even more parallels with King Bazus and Jesus that I haven't discussed yet, and I will be uh, getting into that later. Um, I think what happened here is this was a result of Titus being viewed as the Messiah, being synchronized, identified, in other words, with Jesus, being viewed under the same token. And it is for that reason that the Talmud made this uh, comparison between Titus and Jesus. So I don't necessarily think it proves at Will's conclusion. But what I will say is it certainly at least proves that this is a sign of Flavian involvement within Christianity. I do not think they created this religion, but they certainly took it over. And that's why we have a Pope, Pope Clement, whom is actually Titus Flavius Clemens, uh, being one of the earlier popes uh, in uh, Christianity in the mid 1890s, who was martyred just like Titus Flavius Clemens was, and things like that. So in this case, I would define this as a minimal Roman provenance, and really, the, I define minimal Roman provenance as. Josephus being involved with the Gospels, whether he was actually involved in their composition or the uh, 
about the Gospels used as works as a source. I tend to defer to the latter about the Gospels used him, his works as the primary source to construct the Passion narrative. <clears throat> and that's what I think uh, took place there. Well, that's uh, that's about it for now. Um, so don't forget to subscribe, um, like, share, and comment. If any of you have any questions, uh, comment that down below or send me a message on Facebook Messenger or join my Discord server. Uh, and uh, I'll do the very, be very best I can to answer those questions. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see all of you later.